Today we're going to see um, an example of a hydraulic system in here that the, we, it, it requires us to uh, establish the bond graph model for the system and also make some modifications to it. So let's let's start. Okay, let's read what this problem statement is first. It says a simplified model of this water storage system is shown below. It says assume the three tanks behave as nonlinear capacitance and assume the three conduits have resistance. Make a bond graph model. Introduce inertancy effects of each one of these. Okay, so what what should we do? The first step that we do for hydraulic systems, and we're gonna put it here. I'm gonna call it the steps to generate a model hydraulic system. The first step that we have is use a one junction for each distinct flow. Okay, very good. One thing that we could do is we want to to say, isn't it true that there is a flow on this pipe? There is another flow on this pipe. There is another flow on this pipe. Okay. And in here, you know, flow gets some. So and in here pressure is the same. So but this other step is to Step number two is we we'll say enter the um, elements or attach better than enter say attach the elements that experience these flows. Okay. In this particular case, if there is uh, the other procedure, in case there are uh, flow differences, you know, you could say use a zero junction for each. flow differences or summation so we have done that in the graph but step number two implies that what we need to do Okay, here it says resistance 
resist resistive line so you would have an R element like this this other one would have an R element like this and so will this <coughs> okay you could um, by all three flows could 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 be directed towards this and in here we will have to attach the C element because we don't see any differences in here this would be the C element over here like this and this would be the C element like that. And the, um, of course, in here you're gonna have a, this, and this, and this. The question is, which way does it flow? You could, because you don't really know you could assume that one is bigger than the other, like this, and like this. This could be one assumption, or you could have all three, um, all three of them, because you see, this is this one is a, a reservoir, yeah. So it's a um, water storage system. Assume the three tanks behave like nonlinear capacitance. And assume the conduits have only resistance. Make the bone graph model. All right, so I think we have finished it this way. But um, I think it'd be uh, as important as a matter of exercise to. Uh, uh, to assign the causal marks. In this case, uh, you could say four would be attach elements that see the current differences. Okay current or the flows maybe the, that might be better okay And then the last part would be, uh, we would say, we could say, to complete complete the castle marks. So this would be it, like this, but. Can we uh, assign the causal marks to make sure that the system would work okay and would not give any simulation problems? Let's do that. I'm going to use color blue. Okay. Let's assign this into integ Sorry, we have we have a little trouble here. Assign integral form for the C element. In this case, you have 
and then you try again. Right. You could put the integral form for the C's. You could put the integral form for this. You could put the integral form for this. And you see the rest of it is red because we don't have a way to uh, complete the causal marks. So if you, it's not a bad idea that we call camp G and enter this so you can see the problem, right? So uh, let's do that. Let's just go here. And then um, we're going to enter this into the CAMG software. Uh, Okay, so here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So we put S. No, we don't have an S C. We have C elements. Uh, <coughs> you can always build it from this is a one in here like this. Up there. Then you can have the zero. See, the causality doesn't complete, and that is a problem. I want you to understand why that is the case. And then we have this one over here, and then we have another one right here. And then the C element. So this is the C element. Uh, we have another C element here. another C element on the left. No? I think we have a little problem here. Let me just finish and then I'll fix it. So then this, 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 okay, and then we have another element. Okay, and then we have the R element will be over here. There you go. This is what I wanted to show you. My picture on the right hand side is exactly like the one on the left. Do you see the causal marks assigned? And after that, nothing happens. When you have a system like this, you have dependencies in there. This is why you have like an algebra loop in there. It means that 
things are not of independent nature, but rather equations depend on each other. That's what it means. So you have you have difficulties with solving this. But it, it I wanted to put it in so that you illustrate it was you could see how KMG can actually detect these problems. Um, in another occasion, we will discuss how we solve derivative form or in or algebraic loops. But in here, we are going to do the second modification. Okay, so the part B it says introduce inert effects for each of the conduits into the model. Well, that should not be too hard. Okay. We can do it right here on the graph, and then it says inertia effects. Inertia effect would be to put an I element like here. And then it says And then we have to put this over here. So let's see what happened to the causal marks once we have added all these all these new elements. I'm gonna go back and choose the blue color so we can continue. If you assign this in integral form here, then this will complete. Okay. And what it's saying here is that this one will have the flow so this would be like this okay then we can put the integral form, derivative form, yeah, and then finally we do it here to the right, and then makes this like this. Okay. Did we complete the causal marks by doing this? I think we did. Well, this one is like this. Let's see if this is true when we have the. The one mentioned at the top, the thing that's supposed to have, like, is it indicated at zero that I is supposed to have a gas mark one? Because it says on the uh, inertia of the conduits, meaning the pipes. 
So let's see if this actually works over here. What we have done is add I elements to the flow. So this would be like that. It actually works. And then we have, but so far, so good. I mean, it cured all kinds of problems. Now we have one, one form that is dependent. Let's just think about this. Why now one of those inertias is red? You have a system of three inertias. Yeah. One of those is dependent. When you have three different ones, you may say, oh, I, ha I am starting with all three independent ones. But as time goes on and they become one particular system, then they act together and they act like this. So what it means is that if you start like a motion of this, if you start here, let's see. And that means that if you fill two of them, the third one has to follow. That's what it means. Or if you press on one, the other two go up. Yeah. So there is a time dependency here of the variables, and, and depending on what the what we want to know, we can resolve this. But the point is that. You can have the three the three recipients in there. Yeah. And complete the bone graph model and it will it's predicting that one of them is in the derivative causality or dependent mode. That's what the red means.